Hi, uh, I'm Ted Southern. I'm a president and co-founder of Final Frontier Design, and we make spacesuits. Um, I think I'm in the right room to talk about the exciting future of human space travel. I think we're at sort of a sea change point in, uh, in terms of uh, sending people into space. It's uh, traditionally been the market of governments to get people up there, and uh, all of a sudden people are paying to go up to the ISS. There's a whole host of providers that intend to send humans up to space. I was really excited to see uh, Virgin Galactic talking about that this morning. And I think a huge part of that is going to be safety. Uh, it's really important that this industry remains uh, committed to safety, uh, sending humans up into space. And uh, space is a really hostile environment for humans. Uh, not only are there drastic thermal uh, issues and radiation and high speeds, but uh, perhaps the most dangerous part of space is pressure. There's uh, almost a complete lack of pressure up in space. The human body needs to breathe oxygen, and uh, consciousness is measured in seconds in a full vacuum for a human, human body. Uh, so we need some redundancy as far as pressure goes uh, for these initial uh, suborbital flights, and uh, I think uh, that redundancy is going to have to come from spacesuits. A similar uh, sort of redundancy in commercial um, airline travel would be from oxygen mass coming down from the ceiling. Uh, I think in space travel, this is going to have to be provided by a spacesuit. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, my name is Ted Southern. I'm an industrial designer in New York City. I've run a successful company making uh, props and costumes, special effects uh, for theater and uh, the movies for the last 10 years. Uh, I uh, have a partner in Final Frontier Design. His name's Nikolai Moistia, a Russian man who worked for Zvezda for the last 20 years, or rather for 20 years. His last six years at Zvezda, he was the lead suit designer. His uh, suit designs have flown on Mir and the International Space Station, and he worked both with NASA and with the European Space Agency, uh, developing uh, successful flown uh, suit hardware. Final Frontier Design is an outgrowth of a successful entry into the 2009 Astronaut Glove Competition. We placed second in that competition, outperforming NASA's current technology, and won $100,000 with our uh, single-layer uh, pressure garment design. Uh, we've gotten also a lot of support from NASA. We're in a phase one SBIR that we'll be completing up next month, uh, developing uh, our glove technology further, and it's all single layer glove technology. But we're not just interested in gloves. We're, we want to build a full suit, and about a year ago, almost exactly, we uh, unveiled our Frontier Prime, which is a, a prototype uh, space suit, uh, uh, sort of taking materials that we intend to use for a single garment suit and uh, mocking it up in a double layer, more traditional garment. Um, and uh, I keep mentioning the single layer concept, and I think it's really important for, to understand our uh, technologies and our strategy. All of our competitors, and I'm gonna name them, uh, the government contractors, ILC Dover, Hamilton Sunstrand, and David Clark, um, do intend to enter into this market of, um, of commercial space travel and spacesuits for commercial space travel. Um, in addition to Orbital Outfitters, which is more of a startup company, uh, not in the government contracting realm. They all have double layer pressure garments, and what that means is there's an internal bladder and an external restraint. Uh, what we've done is sort of bonded that restraint to the bladder, and uh, I think we have a significant advantage over those companies uh, in that the single layer bladder is less weight, lower mass, those things are huge for space travel. Uh, they're more comfortable to wear while pressurized and unpressurized. Uh, single layer garments are lower torque under pressure, so it's much easier to move. And significantly, they're easier and cheaper for us to produce. There's less material involved and significantly less labor. So we see a huge advantage in this technology, and uh, we're really excited about developing it into the future. You can see here, this is a single layer prototype elbow that we have with two neutral positions, kind of unheard of in extension and halfway into flexion. Um, so uh, we, we plan on, uh, this is a very modest proposal for our projected revenue. We started last year with an initial investment of $6,000. This year we'll see revenue of $117,000 with uh, Phase 1 SBIR and also an initial uh, contract with a Dominican uh, company developing Earth-based technologies that are related to, uh, related to the products that we're developing. Uh, we intend to apply for a phase two SBIR, which will uh, help for funding in 2012 and 2013. Uh, in addition to developing our Earth-based uh, related technologies, um, mostly around pressure garments, um, and uh, hope to 
uh, within the next couple of years start providing these suits to uh, the, the host of suborbital and uh, eventually orbital providers. Uh, so we intend by 2014 to have a full contract with an orbital provider selling spacesuits to, to one of these companies. Uh, with that in mind, we're soliciting $750,000 for potential 10% ownership in our company. Um, we, we are really excited about the prototype technology we have, but we need uh, some money to, to bring that into fruition to actually realize some space-ready hardware. Um, and uh, while we don't, uh, we're not naive enough to think that we would have an IPO in the next couple of years, uh, we do think that we have a host of technologies that we can license. Um, and uh, with that, I, um, I'm particularly excited about the initial incremental stages that to, uh, to provide safety garments for low Earth orbit, or rather suborbital companies. But I feel like there's a big opportunity here for us to grow in the future past these uh, IVA safety suits for inside the vehicle. Uh, there's a lot of potential for thermal garments, liquid cooling garments, communications, and a host of other uh, inevitable um, safety garments that will be necessary for the future of human uh, space travel. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions. So. So, so um, are you, is, do you have an estimate for the number of people you expect to serve so over some period of time? And I'm assuming these are custom made. So you, did, you talked about total revenue, but you didn't talk about sort of at the product level what, who, who you're selling to and, and who pays. Sure, sure. I think we're imagining selling to the, or the providers, the uh, company. We actually had conversations with them. Um, uh, with um, Armadillo Aerospace and uh, Space Adventures, uh, via Space Adventures, about providing these suits to Armadillo Aerospace. And um, I guess we're imagining those companies to be buying the suits from us. We're imagining a base price of about $75,000 for 10 flight, uh, certified for 10 flights. Um, it's obviously quite difficult to, uh, to, to estimate how many units these companies are going to need in the future, but uh, that projection of about $1.4 million in revenue in 2014 is based on maybe 15 suits, which I think is an extremely conservative uh, uh, estimate. I, I see a lot of new space companies that have excellent technologies and come from, at least have management teams with excellent te technology backgrounds. And the actual IP that they develop is uh, very unique and well thought through from a technology perspective. But the concerns that usually arise are concerning the market itself. Um, if a wonderful technology doesn't have a market, um, you know, the, the viability of the company is not that strong. This analogy applies in you know, many other industries, not just new space. So this is kind of an adjunct question to the one that was just asked. You answered kind of how big the market was. Can you tell us more about what the distinction is between space tourism markets versus other markets and where you see yourself fitting in relative to that? Um, I think I understand that question. I, obviously, our, our first focus is space tourism. I feel like uh, we want to grow incrementally with this growing market. and. Um, uh, low Earth orbit is, or rather, suborbital flights are sort of the perfect place for us to enter into spacesuits. Spacesuits are extremely complicated um, uh, engineered uh, garments, and um, we feel like that incremental um, first uh, step into suborbital companies is a, sort of the perfect place for us to develop our, our technologies. Um, as far as uh, other, other um, commercial options for spacesuits, um, I think a lot of uh, long-term um, potential is for EVA uh, spacesuits and the sort of things for um, maintenance on, on space hotels or the International Space Station. Uh, EVA spacesuits tend to be very complicated but can be incrementally improved from IVA suits. And so I think we see potential uh, growth there for uh, long-term for EVA suits. Does that make sense? So you... You articulated the um, advantages of a single layer spacesuit, but is there a desirable margin of safety from the old style dual layer spacesuits? Yeah, we've uh, tested these suits according to NASA standards. Um, we have burst tests upwards of 25 PSI. Um, we uh, can go through cycling phases. Uh, 
that are equivalent to uh, the traditional double layer suits. Double layer suits can fail as well. They're all sewn. And I think a big advantage that we have is uh, this bonded technology that we have doesn't involve sewing at all. So we're not puncturing the garment. So uh, the safety uh, we find is, is equivalent. You talked about selling your suits to the suborbital companies to begin with for 10 flights per suit. But what about sizing issues? Are you imagining that they will buy like a fleet of suits for their customer base of the various yep. sizes? We're imagining a small, medium, and large suit. And uh, if we can go back to the single layer uh, elbow right there, it's actually an adjustable uh, size. So it's something that will have a medium size that can be adjusted to different, uh, okay. different capabilities. And that would work on the arms, on the legs. We actually have a uh, ankle uh, adjustment that would allow for somebody as tall as myself to wear the suit, uh, which is key. And uh, we would have, <laughs> we would also have uh, finger sizing so that each individual finger could be sized. Hi, uh, I've got a lot of questions, but I'm having trouble getting past the valuation and would like for you to talk a little bit about that. Um, for a company uh, at this stage with two founders and no customers yet, and a lot of development in front of you. 10% uh, for 750,000 seems rich, and I think you'd have trouble with a lot of the angel uh, stage investors and you know, VC investors supporting that. So can you tell us your thoughts behind that? Sure, sure. I guess I'm playing hard to get. I, I feel like I really have a ter terrific technology here, and uh, I feel like um, with uh, Nikolai's experience, uh, we have something really solid to stand on. So I'm, I am very confident in our technology. I feel like we're going to outperform our, tech, our competitors tremendously. The government contractors uh, are going to be about 10 times as expensive as we are. And so uh, with this market coming forward, um, I, I, I honestly believe we have a really strong company. So. Do you have built into your scheduling the time cost of money pending risks from flights not actually happening when they say they're going to, primarily with the issue of delay of first flights and commercial flights for um, the private space companies? If they're not flying when you think they are, according to your schedule, how will that affect your return on investment and requirements for funding? Um, that's a very good question. Um, we uh, we can I mean we can develop this technology very quickly, right. um, and uh, so I guess of course we would need to sell these suits before um, before these companies are actually space certified. Um, we anticipate having flight tests with with these companies uh, well before any actual uh, space flight would happen. Uh, we obviously do uh, hope to receive NASA funding over the next year. We're actually uh, having them in our lab in, a, in next week, which is unfortunately why Nikolai couldn't be here. Okay. And I, we think that's a really good sign okay. of confidence in NASA. So. Um, can you talk about any potential partnerships that you're thinking about or might uh, enter into um, for systems that are kind of above and beyond the suit, life support systems, things like that? Sure. Um, we um, initially, I think, with the IVA suit, life support would be through the spacecraft itself, and so we would have to have a lot of interaction with uh, whatever uh, provider we would um, work with. Um, life support, I think, in the end, is something that we can tackle ourselves. Um, but uh, we are interested in working with um, other companies. We have a good working relationship with both ILC and um, Hamilton, and uh, we would love to be involved in in um, developing technologies that are affordable for, uh, for commercial space flight. Oh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> um, what's, the, what's the cost of developing the suits right now? Why do you, um, how does that change over time with more volume? Uh, the cost uh, right now is um, really encouragingly cheap. Uh, the, the fabrics that we're using are really standard fabrics. They're, uh, urethane laminated nylon, which is used in um, river rafts and blood pressure devices, very standard market thing, about $9 a yard. So uh, the cost of the suit in terms of um, uh, fabrics is uh, something like uh, $700 to $800. Um, uh, labor is, um, 
uh, again, not much easier than a double layer suit. So uh, we, we see a really um, a significant um, margin in um, uh, the, the price of the suit versus uh, the cost put into it. It's, it's a tremendous margin for us. So, so you're, you're at a 95% gross margin or something like that? Uh, <laughs> in development now, it's taking some time and we're working for free. So it's um, uh, uh, probably something like 95%. Yeah.